welcome to another episode of Business and Bubble Tea. Here on the podcast today, we have with us April Long, the co-founder of Pixis. April, it's great to have you on the podcast with us today. Thank you, William Robota. Welcome, April. So you studied here in China and now you are based in Kenya. Uh, what is the, when this um, interest in China-Africa relationship started and why? So yeah okay yeah so yeah so uh, oh, we have to go back to like 10 years ago so when i was uh yeah sure, let's do it <laughs> <laughs> so uh so i was in my master's degree uh, the program in my school and then um i there was a professor who was uh introducing us the idea of uh, social enterprise and social businesses so we read a lot of uh, um, business cases uh, about how uh, companies making impacts in that time. We used to use the term uh, bottom of the pyramid, but I found yeah. it's not really popular right now. So and then uh, at that time, I was like 20 years old. I was wondering what I'm going to do. So uh, my background was in like advertising. So I mm -hmm. used to like intern in one of the best like advertising agencies, but I felt like um, I, I was still confused if if this is something I want. So when I met mm -hmm. the I the idea or the concept of uh, oh social business, so you make yep. money at the same time and you make an impact, sounds so cool. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, ah, uh, let me go to those places where um, uh, they, they feature in those uh, yeah. case studies. So um, I decided, and at that time I was a student, I had a lot of uh, time to spend. So it's like, uh, let me try go somewhere different. Mm. So, um, and then there was these student, uh, students organization called ISEC. So yep. um, through Isaac, I, I found an opportunity. Uh, my my just my target was uh, uh, South America and Africa. So I soon find an opportunity nice. in Africa. So what, uh, what what kind of motivated those places? Was it just that you wanted a totally different experience to say I don't know going to to, to Europe or, or North America? What was the what was the driving force? Was there a, a did you have a language teacher that inspired you for Latin America or what, what was the yeah, so it's it's purely the 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 idea of uh, you know social business, uh, social yep. enterprise, and all these uh, case studies. Uh, so I felt oh, previously you felt like uh, the cool, the only cool place are the developed countries, Europe, um, mm -hmm. um, U.S., whatever. You felt these are the cool places. These are the places that you want to go. But then once you get into this concept, and you felt like oh are many cool places in the world and i'm going to <laughs> go to an even cooler place <laughs> so, <Yeah. that's> <laughs> so i mean and i mean and i thought like i was 20 i was still in school so uh maybe if i don't go to africa right now mm -hmm. i probably m would not have a chance later on in my in my life so i, I felt if i have if i want to go to europe um or somewhere like us um, I probably would have still have opportunity, but in yep. Africa, if not now, um, maybe I won't go. So, uh, so I, I just decided, okay, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. It was a period and of exchange, like student, because I, I, it's basically what I thought last year as well. I did uh, an exchange in South Africa. It, was it the same for oh. you? It was like study program there? Oh, that's cool. so for me, um, uh, because it was Isaac, it was not really a like a, a school exchange. So, uh, through Isaac, I found a like a six month uh, internship, uh, okay. in Tanzania at that time. That was literally like ten years ago, twenty thirteen. So that's how I started. Amazing, and and I guess so. Now we're at Pixis. What's the what's the bridge linking up all the way up to Pixis? <laughs> Yeah, so 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 I I didn't I didn't know at that time that little that that decision that I want to go to Africa to check it out will then uh you know change the rest of my life. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, and then fast forward to today, 
So um, um, actually, I ended up having all my professional career uh, in Africa after that internship. So I spent like six years in uh, financial institutions, mainly in commercial banks in Africa. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So so and then while I was in Africa, my focus has always been the Afro Asia corridor. So um um and after working from for, for the bank, right? I felt um 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 and then there there's this new trend of you know that there's there has been a, a great um uh development of the uh, the tech ecosystem in in Africa yeah. in the past five to ten years. So I saw yeah. like maybe it's it's time like uh, um, uh, whatever we've been doing in the bank. There's something that I can do from a a a technology perspective because I always believed that um on uh, yeah the, this I've always been having keeping an eye on on the technology sector even when I was uh, back in China. So I, I felt um, uh, the ecosystem is coming up and uh, there's an opportunity. And uh, moreover, I see that um, uh, in the, especially in the, you know, fintech payment mm. space in Africa, um, um, uh, because uh, the tech ecosystem is, is, is quite uh, centered towards the, I mean, it's, an, it's, an, it's a very much English speaking <laughs> community. Yep. And uh, uh, not a lot of Asian uh, are getting into this space. Mm. So when you look at the cross-border uh, payment space, so people are looking at uh, mostly the uh, like the U.S. Africa corridor, and then it goes yep. to Europe, Middle East, Africa corridor. But then when we talk about Asia, especially East Asia and Africa corridor, uh, people are not working on it like there there's mm. there's there's so it's a it's still a, an empty space it's a huge gap and then but then when you look at the 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 context the fundamentals there's a lot of trade happening in this corridor yep. and people do need this service so that's the gap that we identified and uh, we are confident that we have the necessary network resource know-how so that's how we started and in the in the early days i guess when when you were um, starting out, I'm just wondering from from your perspective, coming from uh, China to Kenya, did you have any kind of um, culture shock? Uh, and then, and then, I guess um, was the was there a difference in terms of business etiquette? And then, um, as you launched the social enterprise, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So um, yeah, there are a few. One is uh, you know when you before you come to Africa. We it's 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 common to have a kind of stereotype on you know this Africa you especially from the cases that you read you read about people in mm. Islam whatever um, and then actually um, when you when you come to Africa Africa is also very very dynamic um, there are yep. all different kind of community and uh, different kind of people. So I used to work for Standard Charter Band, right? So right. people around me are really, I mean, the elites in in this country. Uh, they are well-educated. Um, uh, they speak much better English than mine. <laughs> I'm a Chinese. <laughs> yeah, right? And then, um, uh, and then they taught me a lot of things. Uh, but then when I want to really go back to my vision about like, you know, the social enterprise, and I did try, I yep. actually set it up. I set up a social business um, um, of promoting African uh, handcrafts. I, I literally, I went to up countries to those women groups, literally. So these hmm. are the people that I imagined <laughs> in my mind yep. when I thought about, uh, of Africa. But you see, um, so when, once you get into um, a community, say my 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 bank social cycle, mm -hmm. circle, um, actually it's not so easy for you to really access. It takes a lot of resource. It takes a lot of uh, know how. It takes a lot of language skill to yep. really, um, you know, to access uh, people who are in another circle. So um, I think initially that was the challenge. I thought once I land, I'll be doing the cool things, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and 
then I found, oh, okay, that's actually very costly. That's why all these uh, uh, global NGO, um, and then that's why all these uh, social enterprise, all these uh, CSR projects are yep. are are um, uh, difficult or valuable. Mm. Yeah. And talking about difficulties, um, how was when you started Pixies? Did you encounter any difficulty in starting this cross-border um, payment um, company? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. There is uh, definitely a lot of challenges um, um, and then a lot of uh, great, I mean, opportunities as well. I think they all come in, in one. So, yeah, so... Um, I think the exciting part is really um, is quite an empty space, uh, not a lot of player. So on, on the other side, it also means the challenge is not a lot of people understand um, yep. what you're talking about. And uh, when, the, when people do not understand, they cannot verify. So, mm. um, so initially, it was a bit difficult to convince people on the idea uh, that we have. Um, and then, um, 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 especially when we're trying to fundraise initially, so investors yep. are like, okay, um, like investors in Africa are like, okay, sounds interesting, but I, I couldn't verify what you say about China or about mm -hmm. Asia. But then investors in, 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 Af uh, in China are like, okay, that sounds also interesting, but then uh, I'm not sure what, what is happening in Africa. <laughs> so, I see. So it's kind of it's kind of an information asymmetry between your exactly. investors in, in Asia and your investors. Are they predominantly going to be uh, Kenya-based uh, investors or, or, or more broadly speaking, other parts of um, Africa? So um, uh, not only Kenya-based, uh, but uh, yeah. So, but at the end of the day, so we, we tried to fundraise last year. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, we post uh, at the end of the day uh, our fundraising. It was uh, actually it was promising, but uh, I think uh, we were just starting up, and we had a our expectation was a, a bit high, and then the mm -hmm. market it was actually going down. If you remember, it's yep. still going right now. Oh, it was so easy a few years ago. Now it's not. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we came from that stage, right? So you 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 kind of. Uh, expected a higher valuation, so yep. we 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 then ended up saying, uh, let's pause for now. Uh, actually, we can feed ourselves with our transactions, so so maybe we can just uh, pause uh, or postpone those mm. uh, heavy investment investments that we, we we plan to make. So and keep it lean. Uh, so um, 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 yeah. So so, but then uh, actually, that the same challenge is is the, the same opportunity <laughs> that we are looking at, right? So um, we found there's not a lot of competition in what we are doing, and uh, whenever we pitch, we find uh, um, um, there is there is a long standing, I mean, long wanted demand for what we are op uh, offering. Uh, in in the in the relevant relevant um, uh, yep. industry, so um, so these really gave us a lot of uh, open a lot of doors, gave us a lot of exposure as well. So 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 it's the same thing that made us really excited mm. as well. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we we actually haven't mentioned yet. Um, what does Pixie do exactly? So which kind of services are you providing, and who's your target specifically? Right. So uh, in Pixis, we are building the Afro-Asia cross-border payment infrastructure. So um, um, you find a lot of people building payment infrastructure and they are really doing, there are great tech companies doing really a great job. We, we, we got inspired by all these global tech companies a lot. But then um, I, I, I think really the Afro, the Africa and Asia corridor, um, has not yet been uh, 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 built in a robust way. So, um, 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 uh, yeah, so, so uh, that's what we are working on. And um, 
uh, because uh, one side, if you look at Africa, it's a continent of uh, 54 mm. countries that's yep. sub-Saharan <laughs> Africa, right? And uh, so every country has got its own currency. There's a regulator. So you can't really look at Africa as one thing as a whole, uh, though you're talking about, so we, we often talk about Africa, we have one point something billion, but really the, the, every every country is different. So, um, and then a, a lot of countries are having these problem, liquidity issues, this and that, and there's a lot of integrities uh, to really navigate um, yeah. and in the Africa continent. That's one thing. And only, so if you look at each of the market, they're not that big. So, so it's, 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 it's fragmented, many currencies, many regulators, many yep. different new uh, nuances. And then when you look at uh, uh, Asia, well, let's let's just say China because uh, two thirds of uh, uh, Afro Asia trade are China Africa trade actually. So so um, if we look at China, um, it's heavily regulated in terms of uh, foreign exchange. Yeah. So many people would not notice that, uh, and and the whole governance structure is different from. Uh, international the international norm i mean mm. so the pboc uh um has um they, they, they so there are a certain way that uh how they they clear cny for example it's it's if it's p2p it's b2b is it b2b is it p2p and then b2b mm. there is um normal trade there's e-commerce p2p there is all different kind of scenario are you paying because you are going overseas for study and and more more specifically your focus is on the b2b side of of, of trade or the p2p so uh, so we so we are trying to build a platform for all so mm -hmm. that's why, why we say an infrastructure so um yeah um um so so basically we are con we're trying to connect all these currencies um on this side with all these uh, scenarios on this side so that um uh, once you plug in you'll be able to do all sorts of transactions and and, 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 and what was yeah, yeah and, and what what were some of the challenges you encountered in terms of regulatory approval because you mentioned the interesting, you mentioned that transacting cross border with um, with with China doing FX, um, there's there's sort of different levels of challenges. And how do you handle uh, KYC, for example? So knowing your consumer, ensuring that there's, I guess, due diligence on the on the transactions. Because a lot of a lot of fintechs have um, potentially fallen afoul a bit in terms of their KYC. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, um, actually, um, it, 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 it is quite a challenge because when you talk about compliance, um, you find there are different standards in Africa, yep. in China, uh, the way that you comply and the whole compliance structure is very, dif is very different. So that's why yep. you find also um when we we doubt us um uh when there is um just an africa fintech when they talk to a chinese fintech they want to connect directly there's a lot of gaps because yeah. it, it, it's it's like they're not talking in the same language um <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah, what these guys require um th does not make sense to to this part of to this to this part so basically, that's that's uh, the part that we play. We have to then look at when you're talking about this, what exactly you're talking about, and we find a way to to gauge the two. So um, and then to find a way to so so sometimes it's really um, um, uh, how you structure it, how you present it, um, um, uh, the business itself. Fundamentally, it's it's a clean business. It's a good business. But then it's it's how you comply with the uh, respective regulators. So yep. uh, that's one of the things that we add value. Um, and we found really without someone who understand uh, uh, both um, uh, spaces, it's really difficult to put them together. There is and the need I, I, for this bridge. Yeah. Sorry, when, what is what? 
that there is actually a need for a bridge to connect these two exactly. sides. Exactly. And I wanted to ask, because um, when we talk about going to, to China, when we talk to sort of a lot of Western companies, and Starbucks is a great example, they partnered with a, a company based in China. Um, and so there's this sort of big mantra that it's important to have a good uh, uh, partner company in China if you want to grow in China. Um, would you say um, it's different in the in in your context in Kenya, or um, would you? Uh, or is it is it is it a totally different kind of environment? What 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 would you say about that? You mean do you if you come want to come to Africa, do you need an African? So yeah, if you're if you're a Chinese entrepreneur from China or or, or elsewhere, and you want to um, uh, sort of launch launch in in, in Kenya or, or or Africa, more broadly speaking. Um, is it important to have strategic partnerships or are, are there other opportunities to, to establish yourself? Yeah, so um, definitely, I think everywhere in the world, if you want to um, look, so, so, so there, yeah, so, so being localized and then being on mm-hmm. a brand is, is definitely very critical. Um, um, though I think that the good thing about Africa is um at least you you have uh, there's Fran- francophone countries, anglophone countries, mm-hmm. and then there are some countries speaking Spanish. Um, um, with that context, at least you're able to get into the the community, the context sooner, yeah. uh, as opposed to like you know China is basically is is not so much English speaking, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of specific context. Um, um, it has not been that open, especially like 20 years ago when, when Starbucks just came in, right? So, yeah. so um, you, when you compare that, Africa is much more open, especially looking at uh, Kenya. Um, it's uh, Nairobi is the headquarter of uh, you, some, some UN organization, right? So it's very mm-hmm. global. Um, 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 uh, not saying because it's open so that uh, a local a uh, partner, strategic partner is not important, but I think there are different ways to 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 make the structure work. Uh, it doesn't have to be. It depends on how your team works. It can be an external strategic partner or it can be a an, an JV, it can be a, a shareholder mm. kind of partnership. So, um, so all kinds of... For us, uh, uh, we have a lot of mentors <laughs> that are African. Yep. Yeah, so we also have like investors and and very strategic partners that are are African, um, and then plus uh also the team with with so the the fund founding team were here for more than ten years, so um um and um, um so so I think it's it's a good combination of like local knowledge, and mm-hmm. also um and the the network to Asia as well. <laughs> And we have, we have time for, I guess, one final question. Uh, and I just wanted to ask, what would your advice be to, um, I guess, would-be entrepreneurs, either from the China context or elsewhere, um, looking to um, engage uh, with, with Kenya or Africa, more widely speaking? Um, what, would, what would you say, uh, I guess, has been key to your success um, out, out, out there? Mm. Okay. First, I I I uh, thank you for for your words, but I I don't think that we are successful <laughs> yet. <laughs> we are we are just uh, yeah we're just starting, and there's still a lot of challenges. So we're facing mm-hmm. challenges every day. Um um uh. But uh, I think uh on the other side is it's 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 a success to myself to to just by starting it. I think yeah. uh it's it's already a, living it's, and. Yeah, success to myself. Starting in another country. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, um, I mean, um, um, I mean, uh, I think there are still a lot of, first, I think there are still a lot of opportunities in Africa. So uh, don't scared about these word of Africa. I, I want all of us to look at Africa as a new untouched um it's not so untouched right now already. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, there's a, a lot of com- competitions. There's a lot of yep. things 
happening already in the African It's continent. dynamic, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's so yeah. So but then still by and large, if you 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 compare with Europe, compare with China, for example, there's this word of called Neijuan, right? It's, Nature is like being very, yeah. very competitive. Internal fight. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, uh, but then when you come to Africa, you find uh, it's, it's it's fairly um, uh, uh, untouched, and there's still a lot of opportunities. Uh, that's number one. Number two is uh, uh, <clears throat> being comfortable to start from small. Because um, mm -hmm. uh, I found a lot of tech companies when they come, because um, you know the scale of China. Actually, there's no market that you can compare to such a huge market in China. Even, I don't know, in U.S., you know, China has the, the population, the, the whole economy size. It's, it's, it's very difficult to, for you to find another market that, that, that compares with, with the scale mm -hmm. in China. So a lot of people, when they, especially big tech company, when they first come to Africa, they get disappointed because they felt, oh, the market is not sizable enough. And they're expecting something true. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. So, um, uh, but when I look at local founders in Africa, um, um, at this point, they are, they, they might not be that big, but they are agile. They are yep. very comfortable to start from small and then lay the foundation. So, um, 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 so I think uh, that's another thing that I see. Um, and uh, that's something that I always tell myself as well. Um, um, you have to start from somewhere, start from small and feel comfortable about it. Um, um, being agile, be, be lean. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. So I think, uh, that's, um, 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 so don't, don't be scared about, uh, <laughs> the word Africa. Well... <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, 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 and then also set your bar, set your expectation realistically. And, uh, um, uh, there's a lot of potential, but you start from now. Yeah. Amazing. That's well, that that's all we've got time for today. But thank you so much for joining us on Business and Bubble Tea, April. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, William and Robota, and thanks for for listening to it. So, uh, and I can be reached on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, April Long is my name. So, uh, I do want to also get in touch with uh, people who are in the tech space, in tech space uh, across Afro Asia. So, do reach me out uh, if you're interested.